Welcome to the Lose Weight, Live Life podcast. If you're someone who would do anything to lose weight, yet finds it impossible to stick to a diet, to eat less, or just what you think you should, this podcast is for you. I am your host, certified life and weight mindset coach, Claire McKenzie. Listen in to learn how to stop overeating, lose weight for the last time, and create a relationship with food and yourself that you love, all without diet deprivation and self-sabotage. Hi everyone and a very warm welcome to podcast episode number 86. Today I want to talk to you about meeting yourself where you're at but before I do that I would like to say thank you to everyone who took part in the Finding Food Freedom Weight Loss Coaching Experience Week. It was great working with you and helping you get started or continue your weight loss journey. If you enjoyed learning about your relationship with food then I would love to invite you to our free Facebook community. You can request to join by going to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash lose weight live life. That's all one word, lose weight live life. And I also have a favour to ask, which is if you enjoy listening to this podcast, if this podcast has helped you in some way create a better relationship with food yourself, please can you take 30 seconds or less to pop into the app that you're listening from and give it a rating or review. The more people who review and rate the podcast, positively of course, the more people that Apple or Spotify will show it to. The more people we can help create a better relationship with food and themselves. And it will, as I said, just take you a matter of seconds. Thank you so much. Okay, so let's talk about meeting yourself where you're at. Yesterday, members of the Spring 2022 Lose Weight Live Life Academy enrolment were taken through the process of thinking about both how they want to eat for life and how they want to eat for the next couple of weeks as they start to create the relationship with food that they want and lose weight. They do this through creating a food framework. They create their food framework after answering lots of questions about what and how they want to eat. Notice I said want to eat and not what they think they should eat in order to lose weight. For many members, going through this process is challenging because they've spent decades telling themselves what they can and cannot have, avoiding bad foods and then maybe eating them behind their own backs. This looks like following a diet and writing down everything that you eat, but not putting down the foods that are not on the diet because you're judging yourself for eating them. This looks like maybe eating in secret when you're on a diet so that you won't get judged by others for not following the diet correctly. But it doesn't matter whether others see you because inside you're still judging yourself. When you start thinking about how you want to eat, you might think that you want to eat all the things you've previously denied yourself or told yourself you can't have or you shouldn't have. And it feels uncomfortable. You might doubt yourself. You might feel confused. When you spent decades being on or off a diet, the idea of taking 100% ownership for food choices and how you want to eat in order to be the weight that you want to be can take some getting used to. And here's why. Most of us who have struggled with our weight for much of our lives have got into a pattern of wanting to eat foods and drink drinks we tell ourselves we can't or shouldn't have. We felt dismay watching our slim friends have dessert whilst we've restricted ourselves and felt deprived. And sometimes our thoughts and beliefs have got stuck on wanting all the things. It feels like the needle being stuck in the groove of a record going round and round, wanting what we cannot have. Eating whatever we want, usually highly refined, sweet or savoury foods, or drinking whatever we want, we just think is something that's not available to us. And the more we deny ourselves, the more we want it. Think back to being a child or even mothering your own children. There is nothing that creates desire in a child more than telling them that they cannot have what they want. When children cannot have something, they focus a lot of their time and attention on it. This is what happens when you spend years and decades telling yourself you can't have what you want. Your need for it is so great. You've never considered why you want it and whether having it will live up to your expectations. And then think, of course, when we get our kids or our kids get the Christmas presents that's been hankered after all year. They may be thrilled and ecstatic, but for how long? How long is it until the expensive, just got to have it dress is discarded on the floor with all the other acceptable but not great clothing items? How long until the novelty of playing with the action hero has worn off and it's buried deep at the bottom of the toy box? And this is what happens when we spend decades telling ourselves we cannot eat all the foods. We really, really want them. But when we tell ourselves we can have them, when they are no longer forbidden, we find that they become somewhat less desirable. The novelty of them wears off. To some extent, 
So does that mean that when you tell yourself you can eat whatever you want, you suddenly stop eating all the things? Unfortunately, no, it does not. Well, remember you spent years or decades denying yourself. That desire isn't going to go away overnight. And your desire is complicated by the effects these foods have on your body. Highly refined sweet and savoury foods create changes in your brain that causes you to desire them more. Refined sweet foods create changes in your hormones that lead you to be hungrier. It would be easy to think it's not fair, but that's not going to help you. And it would be easy to think, aren't you just telling me that I still cannot have what I want? So what I encourage you to do, what I'm encouraging members in the academy to do, is what I call meet yourself where you're at. This looks like you owning the truth of what it is you want right now. This might be you believing you really want to eat all the chocolate and cake or crisps, or it might look like you seeing that you want to not want to drink so much wine each evening, but that right now you still want it. Whether you feel that way about food or drink, it's seeing that you would like to be someone that doesn't want all the things that you want, but right now you want them. And owning that truth is really important. This is truly meeting yourself where you're at. And you want to meet yourself where you're at because then you can truly work on what has been going on for you. You see, the years and decades you've been in diet mentality is a bit like being a teenager at home. The boundaries of the diet are the boundaries set down by your parents. And just like a teenager, of course you want to rebel against them. Teenagers often push against those boundaries, finding ways to get what they want without the consequences being too severe. This is the same as you thinking you can get away with dessert today if you cut out breakfast in the morning. Or you can go over your calorie limit for the day because you did a double workout in the gym earlier or you took an extra long walk. And then when the teenager leaves home, maybe goes off to university, all of a sudden there are no boundaries and they might find themselves partying every night, doing all the things they weren't allowed to do at home. But then what generally tends to happen is that they realise partying isn't as much fun when you do it every night. Sure, some nights might be good, but many aren't. They discover that partying every night leaves them feeling not so great. They might even discover they miss out on other things that they want to do because they're sleeping all day. Or they suffer the consequences of missed essay deadlines, or maybe they lose their jobs when they turn up late for working the Saturday job they've got that was helping them fund their partying, maybe. So what happens? Well, they settle into a pattern of balanced partying. They see that partying occasionally, or when maybe there is a special occasion, is more enjoyable than partying every night. And this is similar to the process that many of you will find when you go through working out what you want to eat, taking full ownership and responsibility for it. When you've been often ingrained in diet mentality and you take the rules away, just like the uni student who thinks they want to party every night, you may initially find yourself eating all the things. But then you realise the novelty wears off and that eating all the things isn't what you want because you don't feel great and you're not losing weight. You realise these foods make you hungrier. You realise they don't feel great in your body and leave you feeling, well, maybe inflamed or sluggish. You start to realise that actually you don't want to eat all the foods you thought you wanted to eat. They actually don't taste as good often as you thought they were going to. You start to notice that they don't meet up to your expectations. You start to pay attention then to what you truly want versus what you thought you wanted because you have denied yourself it for so long. And then you start to feel empowered. You start to see that just maybe you can find a balanced way of eating that is what you truly want. You can see that you can still eat those foods, but that when you don't eat them all the time and are intentional, and I like to use the word choosy or fussy, about what and when and where you have them, you enjoy them more. Or you might not go right to this realisation. You might also spend a bit of time in the it's not fair room, where you go back to thinking, I know, I can't, you see, I told you I cannot eat what I want. And what you really mean when you think this is I cannot eat what I want and lose weight and feel great. If you find yourself here, you're going to want to go deeper into exploring why you want the foods that you still think you want. You're going to want to explore what they're giving you. Is it the pleasure of the foods? Is it that they provide you with comfort or escape from your life? And this is the work, of course, that we do in the academy. This is where you figure out the truth of your relationship with food and start to understand it. This is where you figure out what the food or drink is giving you that you believe you cannot get elsewhere. Because once you understand your relationship with food, then you can start to make the changes that will make it work better for you. This is you taking 100% ownership and being on the path that will finally get you what you want. One more thing I want to touch on here. Another important part of meeting yourself where you're at 
is letting go. And I did a podcast episode on this last year. It was episode number 46, and I would love you to check it out. Because in addition to getting used to taking ownership for your food choices and doing the work of figuring out what you want, it's also important to do this work of letting go. Letting go of regrets about your relationship with food and your weight, letting go of self-judgment and perfectionist thinking, and letting go of that negative soundtrack to your life that seems to run on default. Okay, so that is it for today's episode. If you would like to join us in the Lose Weight Live Life Academy when it next opens for enrollment, go to www.thebestyou.coach forward slash enroll and sign up to join the waiting list. So have an amazing weekend or week, depending on when you're listening to this. And I look forward to chatting to you next time. Take care. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast and are ready to live a more intentional life, lose weight as a part of that journey and create a relationship with food and yourself that you love, then I would be honored to have you join the Lose Weight Live Life Academy membership and coach with me. The program offers different levels of support to suit you, including self-paced learning, twice weekly calls, private coaching, an amazingly caring community, and lots more. Find out all the details about when and how you can join at www.thebestyou.coach forward slash coaching.